Thank you very much, John. Good night, comrades and friends, to this meeting of the Democratic Labour Party here in the city of Bridgetown, right next to the Parliament of Barbados and also to Independence Square, which as you know is an important and sacred ground for the Democratic Labour Party, the political history of our country. I want to say tonight that I feel good to be part of the winning side in Barbadian politics. I feel really good and I know from the things that have been happening around us. Even the fact that as I left St. Philip tonight it looked as if the rain would fall. But God has been merciful to us tonight and at all of our meetings. That you've been able to come out with your chairs and hear the issues as articulated by the candidates of the Democratic Labour Party without any disruption and without any problems and it amazes me that we can go throughout Barbados in every nook and cranny of this island almost every constituency and we have no difficulty in putting our views over to the people of Barbados no hecklers no problems with police permission no problems with people who can't get into their driveways sometimes at night. No problems with noise. And yet the six persons who are elected by the people of this country in constituencies that do not support the Barbados Labour Party cannot put their views across in the parliament of this country without the intervention Interference. Interference and what I consider abuse of the standing orders of this country with the Speaker of the House of Assembly being mute. I'm not saying he is mute of malice. I am saying he is mute. And if you believe that the Parliament of this country is being well served, I heard all of the abuse heaped on the Democratic Labour Party on Tuesday and the abuse on me and me and Motley said the only thing you haven't attacked in Barbados is the law courts and the church. She forgets that I said what my position was in relation to the law courts a long time ago. The thing is, I have a choice in relation to the law courts. And I said from as far back as the St. Thomas by election, and I was disappointed then, and perhaps it contributed to my political sojourn and the break that I took. Because I could not imagine that there's any country in the world, far less a country like Barbados, which has had a proud tradition of Westminster politics. <coughs> Not always democratic politics, I agree with what Frondel's church said in that regard, but certainly the trappings of the Westminster office, such that a man could go in the cabinet office today as a sitting member of the cabinet and say things critical of members of the Democratic Labour Party and the Democratic Labour Party as a whole and in support of his political agenda and by afternoon could be Chief Justice of this country. The same afternoon and I warned you in the St. Thomas by election about these very small infractions 
that people like Oenar to take because they believe that because you say you are going with Owen, it means Owen can do anything. But those creeping infractions can lead eventually to a wholesale and total breakdown to the system of government as we practice it. And if the Democratic Labour Party did not stand up and I compliment my fellow parliamentarians for the position that they took in allowing the Speaker of the House of Assembly to know that there are standing orders and he must follow them. We didn't walk out of the House on a whim. We didn't walk out just so. We walked out because the decision of the Speaker was perverse. I didn't say he was perverted at that time. I'm not going to say so tonight either. And he said he is going to seek the protection of the law courts. That there's an act that apparently protects him. It don't protect judges. You are entitled to say that a judge has made a perverse decision. Barbados is still a democracy. What does perverse mean? Wrong-headed. Stubbornly wrong-headed. Against the weight of the evidence. Against the law. Every day in Barbados, there are people filing appeals in the Court of Appeal, in which they use the word perverse. But the Speaker of the House of Assembly, a former English teacher, and I always say you only know one language, Fredel translated tonight. That's true, like Clark taught English too, so there should be no um, disqualification for Mr. Roy. He doesn't understand what the word perverse means, so he's calling around lawyers to try and lock me up. And he is goaded on by Mia Motley, who is quoting legislation that she doesn't understand. She's quoting legislation and sections of an act that do not apply to members of the House. They may apply to you. But you cannot defame yourself. If you say I am a criminal, you mean you can't go in court and sue yourself for saying that you are a criminal? I am a sitting member of the House of Assembly. And I can claim the protections and privileges of the Parliamentary Privileges and Immunities Act. And I should be able also to claim the protection of the Speaker of the House of Assembly. But regrettably, I cannot claim his protection. Because he is more willing to allow people in my absence. And in the absence of the members of the opposition, and even sometimes in our presence to say the most heinous and wicked things about us. And he remains mute, as I said, not of malice. I'm not going to say so at this meeting tonight, but he remains mute. And says nothing. And he said that he, his name has been sullied. I have not sullied his name. Worse things have been said about him than anything I said, and if I didn't say anything about him, I said something about his ruling. Right, 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 correct. And I'm not going to tear him down. Yes. 